You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, let's right now go to two folks who are working on behalf of Senator Bernie Sanders, and that is uh, Nina Turner, a former political official there in Ohio, chair of the campaign, and Philip Agnew, of course, he is co-founder of the Dream Defenders, both of them supporting uh, Senator Bernie Sanders. You heard what Meg Kennard there was talking about, the race in South Carolina. Um, what, uh, how, does, how do you two see what's happening in South Carolina uh, for your candidate, Senator Sanders, specifically when we talk about what's happening with HBC? use? Roland is, is strong. Uh, we are in Birmingham, Alabama right now. We just left uh, Nashville, Tennessee. But earlier, maybe three weeks ago, we were both in North Carolina and also in South Carolina visiting historically black colleges and universities. The senator is absolutely committed to those institutions. He recognizes, he recognizes the special place that historically black colleges and universities occupy in this country as the institutions that were cemented to guarantee that black folks get a higher education. And so things have been going extraordinarily well. We learned so much from the students at Tennessee State. You, you know, your previous conversation was really interesting. I think we're in a very exciting time. What we're seeing here is that you're not going to be able to black yourself into the black vote. You're not going to be able to buy yourself into the black vote. And what we're seeing also is not you, you're not going to be able to endorse yourself into the black vote. You've got to earn it. And that's what we're doing when we're all over the country. The operation is strong in South Carolina. I was just in California, North Carolina, Georgia. We're going to be in. We've already been in um, Tennessee. We're going to be in Alabama or we're in Alabama. We're, in Alabama. we're going to Georgia. Um, you've got to earn that vote this election cycle. And what we're seeing is the Sanders campaign it's not only poised to earn it through the infrastructure, but the policies that we've been talking about are resonating with people. And that's why you see them doing so well with young black people, with black people across the country. Yeah. And Roland, just one other thing before you get to the question. We, we are in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. We want to shout out Urban Smokes, where we are right now. What you see behind us, we're in an African-American owned uh, restaurant right here at Urban Smokes. So anybody in Birmingham and Beeham, yeah, come, come through. Come on down to Urban Smokes. Um, we talk about, uh, obviously, HBCU is critically important, uh, but also what is jumping out uh, really deals with the issue of also economics, and that is uh, black businesses in terms of uh, driving that. And so uh, how is that also playing uh, a role in terms of uh, Senator Sanders' message to African Americans? Uh, because at the end of the day, money is money, and either you have it or you don't. Uh, and we talk about, we can talk about mass incarceration, we can talk about police brutality, uh, but the dollar is was also critically important to black folks. No, it is, and, and in terms of some of the, when we talk about the infrastructure reforms that we need to have in this country and making sure that we have dollars available for black businesses. One that I want to talk about, I know before, even before infrastructure, is the laser focus in on his marijuana legalization policy. Mm -hmm. Within that policy, the senator not only talks about legalizing marijuana all over this country, but taking those dollars and putting them into a grant, a pop for grants. And he names very clearly the African American community and others. And that is vitally important because he could have said all others, but he said the African American community and others and placing that money in a pot so that African American owned businesses, that's just one example, can utilize that money, new entrepreneurship because the very population, our community that has taken the greatest hit for these laws that are unforgiving, the especially when drugs. it comes to war on drugs, yep. when it we we're the, our community took the greatest hit, and so our community should get the greatest lift from any legalization of marijuana. So that's one business opportunity right there. He's also talking about um, millions of dollars in investment in small businesses for minority-owned businesses and making credit available so that small businesses, uh, black businesses, minority-owned businesses have the resources and the credit, right? That is one of the impediments. It's not just the ability to have 
have and to make money, but it's the ability for people to go present an idea, present a concept, and for banks to lend to those businesses. That's right. And he's also talking about that. So it's not just getting the money, as you said, but we've got to remove the uh, infrastructure barriers that have been in place, been put in place by racist lending policies for generations. And he's talking about doing that in his platform. And his other idea, Roland, and, and he has bills for this too about the post office uh, taking over some banking. Mm -hmm. taking over a banking role. That is another opportunity. He talked about that really very much in terms of the payday lending that goes on in our community, other poor communities where they rake poor people over the coals, but making sure that our postal service can take can play a role in the banking and borrowing of money as well. All right, folks, I certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Long way to go. We'll certainly have you back on the show in the future. Nina Turner, Philip Agnew, thanks a bunch. All right, folks, back to our Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, as the marijuana momentum continues, our friends at, at marijuanastock.org have already reached more than half of their funding goal for the hemp CBD investment. That's right. If you want to take advantage of this great opportunity, you need to do it now because it won't last much longer. If you don't know, I'm talking about the hemp plant, the good cousin to marijuana with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Now, if you don't know, hemp farming is now legal in the United States, creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. It is an investment opportunity, and that's where the folks at 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high paying tenants. That's right, they are hemp CBD landlords. You can get in on the action. As hemp continues to change the economic landscape, 420 Real Estate is allowing you to chase the American dream. The best part, you can invest in this crowdfunding campaign for as little as 200 bucks. That's right, 200 bucks up to $10,000. Now you must do it now before the fund is closed. To invest, go to marijuanastock.org. That's marijuanastock.org. Get in the game and get in the game now. Back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.